Earth Hour is an annual event where people turn off their lights in a symbolic show of support for environmentalism. And that ritual is fine, but that's not always how people talk about it. Some organizations are taking it way too seriously and spreading some misconceptions about climate change. The problem usually happens when people start talking about the energy that was saved during Earth Hour, as if that was more important than just the visual symbolism of buildings going dark and the fact that people get together to talk about the issue. But the only things that you can really turn off for an hour are things like your lights, your fans, and other electrical equipment. If you try turning off your heating system for an hour, you're just going to need that same amount of energy uh, at the end of the hour to warm the building back up. The turning off your heating for an hour doesn't really save energy, it just delays that consumption of energy. But it's actually worse than that. You're actually going to need more heating energy because the energy that was wasted by your light bulbs wasn't really going to waste. It was actually going to help heat your building. This is one of those areas where physics crashes into engineering because we use different language. But uh, in, in engineering, we have this concept of efficiency, where we imagine that some of the energy is used for a useful purpose and the rest kind of just goes away. But in physics, we have the law of conservation of energy, and energy never really disappears like that. You might only have a quarter of your or a third of your electricity being converted to light, but that the remainder of that electricity is still being delivered to your building in the form of heat. Actually, even all of the electricity from your light bulb is being delivered to your building as heat because the light that comes out of it will bounce around your apartment for a while, and, but uh, unless it escapes through a window, it's eventually going to be absorbed by walls, ceilings, and floors and turn into heat as well. A light bulb in a windowless room can be 130% efficient because 30% of the electricity is used as light, and 100% of it is used as heat. Some of that energy is used twice. Efficiency is a broken concept. We're going to have more videos talking about this. But you might point out that turning off the lights saves electricity from air conditioning. But Earth Hour happens in March, when Canadian buildings still need heating. Uh, this might help in Australia, which is where Earth Hour originated from. They're in the Southern Hemisphere, warmer climate. Uh, they're probably using air conditioning at that time, but not here in Canada. And even if you're talking about extending the habits of Earth Hour throughout the year, it still doesn't help much because an air conditioner needs a lot less than one kilowatt hour of electricity to remove one kilowatt hour of heat from your building, whereas a furnace needs more than one kilowatt hour of fuel to produce one kilowatt hour of heat. And Canadian buildings need a lot more heating than cooling over the course of the year and our electricity is very clean, so it doesn't contribute much to climate change, whereas the fuels that we use to heat our buildings are a big part of the problem. In Canada, turning off the lights for Earth Hour increases carbon emissions. Not by much, because it's just for an hour, but if you want to use Earth Hour as a teaching moment, this is the part that you should be focusing on. I built a spreadsheet that you can use to show how conserving electricity increases greenhouse gas emissions. This can help people understand where they should really be looking for solutions to climate change. It's a chance to explain why Canada needs heat pumps and insulation, not better light bulbs. Some organizations have tried to tackle this. For example, BOMA's Beyond Earth Hour Challenge tries to look at longer timescales. This year, in 2022, they're looking at a 60-hour time frame. Uh, in 2019, they had an event where they were looking at 168 hours. And on those longer timescales, it is possible to reduce heating energy use by lowering the temperature of your building and reduce carbon emissions. But while interval metering of electricity has become the norm, it's still very rare to find any buildings that meter natural gas on 
many time frames shorter than a month. So there's no way to verify just how much natural gas was saved and how much carbon was reduced during Earth Hour weekend. It's still a confusing message no matter how you put it. Earth Hour was really conceived as a symbolic ritual to raise awareness in Australia at a time and place that was using air conditioning powered by coal-fired electricity. But in Canada in 2022, I often see people taking away the wrong lessons. It teaches people to confuse energy and electricity. It trivializes climate change. It promotes this toxic belief that decarbonization always saves money. And maybe more, most importantly, it punishes critical thinking. Because if you want to speak out against an environmental celebration that involves concerts and snacks, well, then you're a party pooper. There's always going to be some self-righteous environmentalist who's going to call you a climate denier. So people self-censor. The smart people stay silent, and those who can't figure out the problems on their own lose an opportunity to learn about the real solutions to climate change. I don't want to be a party pooper. If you want to hold a candlelight vigil for our planet, that's nice. But if someone tries to tell you that the point is to give our planet a break for an hour or to practice or demonstrate what we could be doing year round, please push back on that. You can politely give them a link to this video to explain why it doesn't work that way. And if you're friendly and respectful, they'll understand that you're trying to help. Thank you for hearing me out.